if your presence doesn't go before us, Lord, don't send us. And right now, our glory is in this place. I know you can't see it. it, it, it it's a spiritual thing. It's, it's hovering right now. It's hovering wherever you need. It's in the atmosphere right now. Only thing you got to do is reach up and grab it. Only thing you have to do is receive it. Yes, sir. Everything that you need is in this atmosphere. It's in this setting. It's in this setting. Everything that you need. Yes, this is holy ground. See, 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 this is a type of atmosphere right here where miracles take place. This is a type of atmosphere where miracles are manifested right now. This is a type of atmosphere where the impossible is made possible. This is that type setting.
if you were just just don't raise your hand, but you you guys can feel me in the natural when I say that that some of us are in a place where we just been swayed, we get swayed everywhere, and we begin to say things like, "Man, when it rains, it pours." Because when one thing's happened, another thing happened, and something else happened, and something else happened, and 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 so it said that Jesus was in the boat sleep, and they and said this, that that they got worried, his disciples got worried, and they came to awake him and said, "Hey, are you just gonna sit there and let us die?" Yeah, 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 yeah. And it said he simply spoke. And it said that the winds and, and the waves and the elements been steel. Yeah, yes. And let me tell you something. How many of you know that you have that same type of authority? Yeah. That when you begin to Come speak, they will begin, to, the demons and all those things that are contrary to the word of God will have to ask you, what manner of man is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what manner of man is this? Yeah. So even the winds and the waves yeah. go back. So, so how many of you are bold enough to where you begin to speak to your bank account? You begin to speak to that joker that's acting crazy. Or you begin to speak to her when she acting crazy. Or, or, or whatever situation that doesn't line up with God, you begin to speak to that situation. Yes. And it, it, it looks at you back and say, what manner of person is this? Yes. That when they speak, I have to obey. Yes. You have that type of authority. Something is shifting today. Something is shifting in your finances. Yes. Something is shifting in your situation. Yes. Yes. Something is shifting in your household. Yes. You just got to catch wind of it. You just got to catch hold to it. Yes. Because something is shifting. Yes. Shifting. We shifting this atmosphere on today. Today. We're shifting every situation that doesn't line up with the word of God. Every situation that doesn't look like abundance. Every situation that doesn't look like prosperity. This ain't no prosperity message. I'm just saying the authority that you have. That you speak to any situation. If they made you mad before they before you came to church this morning, speak to it. If your house is in shambles before you left this morning, speak to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even, even if your mind is not in the right place right now, you speak to it. Yes, yes, God, yes. Because the word says that we have authority to bring every thought captive. Yes. Yes. It doesn't line up with the word of God. Yes. That's the type of authority that you have. That you can even bring your every thought into imagine, into captivity. So if you don't like the outcomes of what you get, stop thinking about it. You have that type of power. Come on now. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can ship. Yes. You yes. can ship. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. See, see, here's the, here's the amazing thing about when you're in a season. That you have the power to change seasons with the with your tongue. Yes. Yes. No, that's that's power. Yes. See, Jesus, Jesus, God gave He gave time for our behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For our behalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our behalf. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't apply to Him. Yeah. Time doesn't apply to Him. See, see, God spoke to seeds into existence by His mouth. He begins seasons with a word. He ends the seasons with a word. Yeah, 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 yeah. So whatever season that you in, yeah. you don't have to wait for it to pass. Yeah. Just speak to it. Yeah. Speak to whatever season. Yeah. If you don't like the season that you in, speak to it. Yeah. Because you have that level of authority. Yeah. If you don't like the season that you in, speak to it. Yeah. Seasons don't end by time. They end by the words that you speak. Bye, bye, bye. Yes, yes, God. If you don't like it, speak to it. Yes, God. Yes, God. Command it to shift. Yes. Yes. If you don't like the winter season you're in, 
shift by the words that you speak and tell foul or tell the springtime or the summertime to come here. Come here. Y'all, yes. y'all don't need That's the type of power yes. that you have. Yes. Yes. That's the type of authority that you have yes. that you can yes. you can speak to the elements. Yes. yes. You can speak to the seasons. You can speak to the wind. You yeah, can yeah, speak yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. anything. Yes. And it has to obey. It has to obey. It has to. Come on, let, let, let y'all y'all sit down. I gotta give y'all some Bible real quick, real quick. Give y'all some Bible real quick. Oh my bless you, God. Bless you, God. So we theme this, we theme this shift Sunday because we are shifting something. And if you had you had experienced the shift in this type of atmosphere, praying for you. Mm. All right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, God. Yes, God. So real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all this real quick. So Matthew five, Matthew. I'll be coming for Matthew five. Matthew five. Matthew five. So speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. God. Amen. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. Before I get started, let me ask you guys a question. How, how many of you are expecting something? Amen. How many of you are expecting amen. a change, a shift, a transition to take place in your yes, life? Yes, amen. yes, yes. And, and, and how many of you, some of you are in that shift, are in that time of transition right now? No, God is holding on to you. To a season of, of just shifting or transitioning, things are happening. And we're expecting things to happen. And sometimes we're expecting them. What? Have you have you changed the way you're thinking about things in the last week, in the last month, since the beginning of the year? What habit have you changed? Mm -hmm. But you're expecting more. I'm gonna tell you something, guys, and this is this this may be a hard truth, but. You can expect things. You can you can pray for things to change. You can do all these things, but if you don't change, nothing will change. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> nothing happens until you change. Change your level of thinking. Change your habit that you've been doing. If you don't change, nothing will change. Now we know that God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants, when he wants. He don't need your permission. He don't need my permission. But he does need your participation. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, your participation is mandatory. Amen. It's mandatory. Mm -hmm. It is mandatory. Without your participation, without your mandatory participation, nothing would change. You can pray the roof off. We know the prayer is foundational. Prayer changes things. You got to do your part as well. That's right. That's right. So we got we got we got to get we got to get out of putting everything on God's divine ability and start to take on the human responsibility of it as well. Mm -hmm. Because God can do it, but your participation is mandatory. It's not suggested if you want change, but it's mandatory. It is mandatory. So, so in Matthew 5, we know this, this is said to be one of the, this, this, we know this is a Sermon on the Mount, where this is said to be one of, one of Jesus' greatest teachings. And it starts out saying about when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. 
His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now right there, we see a, a, a shifting in your mind should have taken place right there because we see blessing as the big houses, the big cars, and all these things, right? And, and that is a byproduct of who God is and a byproduct of being blessed. But Jesus says right here, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to park right here. That, that one right there used to get me quite a bit right there. It said, blessed are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. I used to think that just keeping the peace would bring about blessings, mm -hmm. even in my home. We was young in marriage. I used to say, well, I ain't going to say nothing and I ain't going to do nothing so I can keep peace. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible doesn't say anywhere, blessed are the peacekeepers. <laughs> right. You got to, we, we, I'm challenging you on today. I need you to shift your mind. On that. Nowhere does it say, blessed are the peacekeepers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It said, blessed are the peacemakers. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So in order to have peace, you got to make peace. In order to have peace, you got to make peace. Yes. Mm. And so many times we, want, we run from confrontation mm -hmm. because of the negative stigma that society has put on it. Mm -hmm. But confrontation is good. Yes. Pastor used to say all the time, it's good because if we understood what confrontation was all about, then you wouldn't look at it as it was a bad thing. Because in confrontation, then you can get understanding. You get clarity out of things. Mm -hmm. You tell me right now, Pastor D, I don't like you. I get it. I know where we stand now, so I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. We got understanding out of that. Mm -hmm. So it said, blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. It goes on to say, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. And it goes on to say, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they were persecuted, the prophets who were before you. It says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the salt of the earth. Uh -huh. And some of you have been thinking less of yourselves. I need you to think your, to change, to shift your thinking right now. Because some of you don't see yourself as salt. Now we we talked about this before. The salt does two things: it preserves and it influences. Whatever salt comes in contact with, it it, it preserves. Back in the old older days, that there was no refrigeration or, or no way to preserve things. So salt is a preservative. It kept things from rotting, from spoiling. Mm -hmm. So what are we to preserve? As as believers, we are to preserve truth. We are to preserve truth. And the second thing that salt does is, it, is it's, it's an influencer. Anything that salt comes in contact with, it influences it. Yes, yes. Anything that salt comes in contact with, it influences it. You are called to influence your environment. Yes. You are called to shift your environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anything that you walk into, if it doesn't line up with the word of God and you as a glory carrier, you should influence that situation. You should be shifted in that situation. You have the authority to call those things that are not as though they are. So speak to your storm. Speak to every situation that doesn't line up with the word of God. You have, you are salt. You are supposed to be influencing, influencing. every situation. Yeah. 
that you don't like. Mm. Every situation that doesn't line up with the word of God, you have the power to influence it. You are salt. Yeah. You are yeah. the salt of the earth. And it goes on to say that, but as the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Mm. So if you are a child of God, and if you are not influencing, what happened to your salt? What happened? Wow. That's good. It said that, how can it be made salty again? It says it's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill, on a hill that cannot be hid. As children of God, and, 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 and we, 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 are, we, are, we can't be hid. I said this before, if, if, as, as, a, as a child of God, as a believer, if your life looks normal to an unbeliever, something is wrong. If your life looks normal to an unbeliever, then something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something is wrong. If you just fit in with everybody, uh -huh. I'm not saying you got to walk around with a tattoo on your head saying, I'm a child of God. But it should be something about you that what the world considers strange. Yeah. It should be something about you. The Bible calls it, it says you are peculiar. Yes. Yes. Peter says you are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. So your life should not look normal to an unbeliever. And if it is, we need to check our walk. That's Bible. The Bible. The Bible says walk circumspectly. Yeah. Meaning to watch your walk. Yeah. Watch your talk. That's right. Watch what you do. Paul, Paul says this. Paul says that all things, he can do all things, but all things are not beneficial. Mm. That's right. So you can do it. But just know that they're watching you. Pastor used to say all the time, he says, as, as, as a believer, as a, as a child of God, everybody should have like a hundred people watching them. See what they do. I, I believe, me, me and some of the guys, we were just talking about this the other day. I believe that as a child of God, no matter what happens to you, no matter what people do to you, I believe when that happens, when people gossip about you, when people talk about you, when people misuse you, and they do all these things to you. I believe that God sits on the edge of his chair and he doesn't look at them. I believe he looks at you and said, I'm going to see what they're going to do. Because this is, a, this is a situation where my glory can be revealed. Yeah. This is a situation yeah. where I can get the glory. Yeah. Now God don't deal with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I believe he looks directly at you and says, what, what are you going yeah, to do? Let me see what they're going to do. Uh -huh. Let me see what they're going to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to see what they're going to do. Am mm. I going to get the glory out of this? Or are they going to get the glory out of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So he called, he's called us to be light. I know it, I know it. Y'all said he was messing with me. I got to get him back. And that's just who I am. I know it. I know it. But we shifting something today. That's right. Yes. I know you want to get them back. And I know you say, Pastor, but you don't know what they said about me. What's true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we shifted something today. Now, real quick, I want I want to give you I want to give you the the uh, the definition what Webster says the dictionary uh, the definition of shift means. To shift something means to put something aside and replace it with something else. Or oh, you change something. Another definition it says to transfer from one place, position, to another. We shifted something today. We going from where we were to where God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. See, see, we're no longer gonna settle for good when God has great for us. Yes, that's yes. right. That's you, we've been getting good, but God has great. Mm -hmm. 
God wants you to have his best. Yes. So we're no longer selling for just good. We're going to greatness. We shifted something. Yes, yes. We're no longer selling for average. Because, because God is not an average God. God is not a small God. So everything that God does is on a big level. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. that he does is big. John 10, 10 says he's the God of abundance. Yes. He's not a small God. So God doesn't want us to, to act small or, or play small. He wants us to be abundance, to live a yes. life of abundance. Yes. 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 Well, let, let me ask you guys a question. You know, if you if you get in a, a, in a car and, it, and it's a manual transmission, when you go from first gear and then you have to shift from second gear, something happens, right? Mm -hmm. right. Something happens. And then when you want to speed up a little bit more, what do you do? Shift. You shift. Yeah. When you want to speed up a little bit more, what do you do? Shift. You shift. Mm -hmm. So if you want things to happen in your life, if you want things to change in your life, you got to what? Shift. You got to shift. Yeah. Let, let me ask you another question. I was just looking at this, and yeah. you know, when, when if you're on your computer, you're on your keyboard, okay, now. and if you hit shift to match, match a letter, what happens? It gets what? It gets bigger. It goes from the little A to the big A, right? And then, and then when you, when you, you hit it again, and, 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 and if you hit shift and you hit a number, what happened? A symbol pops up, right? You get symbols. So, so what's my point? When you want things to change, you got to shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to shift. Yeah, yeah. You got to get in the grace flow of God. See, you can't continue in doing what you're doing and think things are gonna change. You can't continue to be the person that you were and think things are gonna happen. Again, you can pray the walls down. You, you can have a shut in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I give you the keys to the church. But if you don't change, Amen. if you don't shift, yes. nothing happens. Nothing happens. You got to shift. So you got to understand this. Ecclesi and, and the, the, the writer in Ecclesiastes says it's like this. He says it's a season for everything. He said there's a, for everything there's a season. It's a time for every activity under the sun. That's right. Under the heaven. He said it's a time to, do, to, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance. He goes on through eight verses and talks about there's a time for this and it's a time to shift to this. There's a time for this and it's a time to shift to this. There's a time to this and it's a time to shift to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But my whole point about this is throughout all those seasons, there's a shift that is always taking place when he wants to go from one place to another, yeah. from one situation to another. From one situation to another, a shifting has to take place. A shifting has to take place. And a lot of time, that shifting a lot of time is not comfortable. And there's the place where a lot of people get stuck a lot of time because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. And I said it earlier. The writer in Ecclesiastes says it's a, it's a time for this and a time for this, a time for this and a time for that. And he's making a point that this is this point that he's making that shift is inevitable. It, it, you, it, it's impossible to avoid and you can't prevent it. Whether you get in the flow of it or you stay where you are, shifting is always going to take place. It's impossible to avoid and it's impossible to prevent it. It's mandatory. 
And that word mandatory simply means that it's required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or it's commanded by a higher authority. Your attendance is required. Mm, yes. Amen. So, so, what happened? What happens when you get in the grace flow of God? I believe that all of us are in a season of transition because God is shifting. He is shifting. And I believe that those that can get on board with the shift, I believe that you're going to experience the blessing in 2 Corinthians 2 and 9. He says, eyes have not seen. No ears have heard. He said, nor has it entered into the heart of man the thing that God has for those that love him. He says, eyes have not seen. Can you imagine that? Because some of us have seen a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he says that these things that God has for you, you can't even imagine them if you get in my grace flow. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you get into the and flow in the currency of where I'm going, you can't you 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 haven't seen nothing yet. Woman of God, you haven't seen nothing yet. Yes, God. I know people that told you some good things, but you haven't, you can't even. Imagine the things that God has for you once you get in his grace flow. Mm -hmm. It says you can't even conceive in your mind, in your heart, mm -hmm. what God has for you. Mm -hmm. You got to shift, but you got to shift with it, though. Yeah, yeah. You got to shift. You got to shift with it. Yes, mm -hmm. You got to get in line with what God is doing. You got to shift with God. See, some of us try and fight against God a lot of times when God is doing something. Yeah. But as the, as, as, as the Pharisee said in the book of Acts, he said that you, you will just find yourself fighting against God and you won't win. Wow. <laughs> ah, that's right. That's so so if, you know, if you know you ain't going to win... Why waste your time? Why waste your time? Yes, amen. Amen. But as a child of God, you win. Yeah. See, on your other half, it's a fixed fight. Yeah, yeah. It's already fixed. Yes, it is. You win. Uh-huh. You win. The fight is already fixed. Jesus already took care of that. Mm -hmm. God took care of that a long time ago. So why are we fighting battles that we've already won? I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. We fight and fights that we already won. And the ones that we are in, we have the power to speak. To that situation, every situation, mm -hmm. every fight, mm -hmm. every battle. Mm -hmm. You have the power to speak to it. And it has to go away. Yes. Why are you still fighting? Why are you still fighting? Stop wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Go on and shift the situation. Yeah. You got the power to do it. Proverbs 3 says this. It says, trusting in the Lord. It says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. This is a new NLT, the New Living Translation. It says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. It says, store, store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years. Mm -hmm. Many years. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge your, 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 your thinking right there. A lot of times we, we, we pray for long life. You don't have to pray for it. The only thing you got to do is do what Proverbs says. It says, do what he tells you. <laughs> is that Bible or is this just me talking? <laughs> we, 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 we pray for it sometimes. Lord, do all this and I want to live a long life. Well, well, the writer says, hey, he says that, that God says, hey, it says, 
Don't forget the things I have taught you. Store them in your heart. Mm -hmm. And it says, if you do this, if you do this, that's that, hey, it's, it, he says, it's on you. It's conditional. If you do this, it says you will live many years. That's right. You will live many years. So, so, I just help some of y'all. Y'all ain't got to keep praying for it. Just be obedient to what the word says. Amen. 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 Shift. A lot of us are praying for increase and, and, and we want more we need more. Mm -hmm. Got to get your Bible before I say this. Matthew 25. You guys know the parable of the, the, uh, the uh, steward, right? Mm -hmm. God says, you know, to uh, he, a servant, well, I mean, a master was leaving and, and it says he left his service with some money. The one he gave two talents, one he gave five, one he gave one. It says the one that he gave two, two, he multiplied, did some good, and he was given two more. The one he gave five, he got five more because he was a good steward. He was a good manager. And the one who uh, had one, he was a bad manager. And it said to him, even what he had was taken away. So here's the principle. Life happens sometimes, I know that. Life happens, life happens, life happens, I know it. Reality is this, that if we, if, we, if we want more, if we desire more, be a good steward. God always gives to a good steward. God always will give more to a good steward. So if we manage what we have, God will multiply it. That's right. If you manage what you have, God will multiply it. I know a lot of times we 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 it, it's short and things are tight. And God says, you manage what you have, He will give seed to the sower. He'll give you more. That's a principle. Mm -hmm. God always gives to a good manager. Even, even in the secular, on your job, if you're doing things, if you're managing your responsibilities well, what happens? You get promoted, right? Mm -hmm. Same principle. If you're doing your responsibilities well, then you're promoted. We're shifting some things. We, this, this is Bible. This is Bible. We're going somewhere. So if you want increase, become a better manager. That's one of the things I pray about daily. God, help me to be a better manager. Help me to be a better steward. Help me to be a better steward. Because God always gives to a good manager. Always. Before I get ready to close, I want to leave you with a, with a few things. I know a lot of times we talk about uh, the, the, you know, in, in the Apostle Peter, he said the ultimate goal of our faith is, re is to receive salvation. And so many of the times that I, I, I believe that we've been duped in um, religion, church, that if we just receive salvation, that that's, that's it. And that some of us, we in relationship with, with Jesus, have a relationship with Jesus, but our life can be miserable sometimes. That we we are uh, always in a situation where we're challenged, we're, we're struggling, we're doing all these things, but we when we say we're going to heaven and have a relationship with Jesus, and we're still challenged. And we were told that, hey, once we receive salvation, everything will be paradise. You are, we're going to have the, the roads with gold and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is that the person of God saves you from your sins. Saves you from the penalty of sin. Saves you from the power of sin. The person of God does not govern your finances. Does not govern 
your health. The principles of God, or God's word, is what governs your finances. He says, hey, if you do this, then this happens. So the person of God and the principles of God are one and the same, but the person of God doesn't require or doesn't, if not, it's a prerequisite for you to live a life of abundance. But it doesn't, it, it does, it's not all inclusive. See, we can't just say, hey, well, I have a relationship with Jesus, and I have a relationship with God, and so now I can have all this. Now he says, hey, now, now you can have this prerequisites. Now you can apply my word to empower you and enable you to have all these things. So we can't put everything on God and not do our responsibility as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so I believe that we have to get past again, just putting everything on God, and we know that's foundation. We know He He He's the foundation. But reality is, we have to apply God's word, apply His principles apply his laws to get the fulfillment of every promise that he's promised to us. We can't, put, we, we can't continue to put everything on God's divine ability again and take out the human responsibility part of it. We got to do our part. And everything that God is going to do for you 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, he's already done it. We just got to line up with it. We just got to get in the grace flow of his word. Get in the, the grace flow of what he is doing and apply his word. The principles of God, his word, governs everything, every promise that he's promised. When you apply the word of God, promises will happen. In Joshua 1 and 8, he tells Joshua, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, yeah. that you may Observe to do everything that, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, in it. Did you guys get that? I'm going to read that part one more time. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then he goes on to give the promise. He says, for then... You will make your way prosperous. Did you get that? He says, for then, who will make your way prosperous? He says, you. 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 See, because he, he gave the promise. He says, but as you begin to apply the word, meditate on the word, then you make your way prosperous. And he goes on to say, and then you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. I just help God out. Y'all can't blame him no more. <laughs> Y'all can't blame him no more about we don't have this and we don't have that. Because again, God, God has given us every promise. Everything that we need. We just got to do our part. He says, hey listen, meditate on my word. Apply my word. He says, then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have success in everything that you do. You will do it. So he says, you, you, these, these 
four things, these four things, these four things in Joshua, Joshua 1 and 8 gives us four things. He says real quickly, he says this. He says, when you, when you, um, okay, he says that. Let it not depart from your mouth. Let it not depart from your mouth. Let it not depart from your mouth. So, so what does he say? He says, first thing is, you got to be talking about the word. Mm -hmm. You got to talk about it. He says, you got you to gotta talk about the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then next, it, it goes on to say, and then meditate on it day and night. Mm -hmm. so, so first thing you got to do is you got to talk about the word. It has to be part of your talk sometimes. And then the second thing you got to do is you begin to talk about that word. Don't forget about it. He says, now you got to go and meditate on that word. It means you got to ponder about that word. You got to do more than just say, okay, I read it, I thought. But he says, no, you got to ponder on that word. Yeah. And then the third thing he says to do is you got to begin to apply the word. So you got to talk about it. You got to meditate or you got to ponder about that word. Does it make sense and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. And then he says, you got to apply that word. And then the promise is, he said, then your way will be made prosperous and everything you do will be successful. I mean, that's, that's what he tells Joshua. He says, let these words not depart out of you guys' mouth. He says, begin, begin to meditate on these yes. words. He says, but then begin to apply the word. Because he tells Joshua that you guys know the story because he had promised them that, that the land flowing of milk and honey, the land of unending resources, the land, the land that had no limit on it. He says, but you got to do these things. Yes. These things, you got to shift your mind because God has already promised you everything. Yes. Every, all provision is waiting on you. Yes. All yes. resources are waiting yes. on you. Good health is waiting on you. Yes. Wealth is waiting on you. Yes. Prosperity is waiting on you. But God says you simply got to do this. You talk about my word. Yeah. Ponder on my word or meditate on my word. He says, and then begin to apply my word. And your way will be made prosperous. Amen. 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 Bless your name, God. All heads bowed for me, please. Eyes closed. I just want to pray with you. Father God, we thank you.